Let's get our team in. There he is, Chip Patterson, getting it done. And Matt Norlander, of course, you read his stuff on CBSSports.com. Both of those guys, excellent writers, part of our team. Uh, Syracuse starting to figure it out. Look like they're a different team than the team sort of mid-season, early season, or even later in the season we thought might not even make the tournament. Chip, what's the story or headline from this game? For sure, it is about the way that West Virginia missed out on opportunities to be able to get control. See, in the first half, they were befuddled by the zone. And we've seen that before. But it's surprising in 2021 because Syracuse actually, in terms of defensive efficiency, wasn't all that great on the defensive end. The vaunted Jim Beheim 2-3 zone wasn't really what carried Syracuse into the NCAA tournament. It was that offense. It was Buddy Beheim. It was the three-point shooting of this orange team that we've seen on display now. Now, uh, twice so far in the NCAA tournament but in the first half I thought they did a great job with that but then in the second half I thought that West Virginia was getting some really good looks they just weren't going down and so that's why if I'm West Virginia when I'm really frustrated I'm going back and I'm thinking about this game I'm thinking about all those open looks that didn't go down early in the second half I'm thinking about uh, the mistakes that were made when you played so well on so many of those late game possessions I, I think West Virginia outplayed Syracuse Syracuse in the crucial moments of this game, but Syracuse was just able to hang on. So the Orange, which were carried by their offense throughout much of the regular season, uh, again, we saw them today being able to step up and get it done. It is it is interesting because we want to say that the 2-3 zone you know, confounds all these NCAA tournament opponents. That's the reason why we've seen Jim Beheim get to the Sweet 16 three times since Syracuse joined the ACC Final Four once in that path. But I really think that Buddy Beheim, the way that he came on in the second half, the way that Syracuse's offense was able to get enough buckets down the stretch. They did a great job of sharing the ball. We, we like to talk about the 2-3 zone because it's part of the brand, but I kind of think West Virginia figured it out in the second half, and Syracuse was still able to get it done. So hats off to Syracuse back in the Sweet 16. Yeah, Sean McNeil hit seven three-pointers for West Virginia. He is a player I identified on HQ, on CBSSports.com, and on the Ion College Basketball Podcast, uh, the kind of player West Virginia would need to shoot at that kind of level from beyond the arc to give them a chance to make it into the Sweet 16. He did well. Deuce McBride mostly did well for West Virginia. West Virginia kind of made Syracuse trip to the end here. Like, if the game was 41 minutes instead of 40, West Virginia might have been able just to tug it back, but they couldn't do it. Three-point shooting was significant, but not the absolute difference. Syracuse made 14, West Virginia made 11. To me, it's Derek Culver. He was a much better player this season for West Virginia than he was a year ago. Made huge strides. Non-factor for the most part in this game. Two of ten from the field, seven points. And I understand that it's harder to get him involved given the way that Syracuse plays defense. It's got length. It has it has eliminated Derek Culver-like players under Jim Beheim for 40 years. But the fact that he couldn't be more successful was a huge detriment. And Syracuse got hot to start with. And then I have to mention Buddy Beheim because he has turned himself into an NBA prospect, undeniably to me. I don't know if he'll eventually get drafted or not, but he is shooting so consistently and has such good size. And when you help Syracuse yet again as a, as a lower seed move on like this that first half performance was just enough to push SU into the Sweet 16. Jim Beheim has done it again and he's done it with his son. It's really turned into it's, it's quite a wild story to be honest with you. Like when Buddy Beheim, his brother's at Cornell, when Buddy Beheim committed to Syracuse, he was seen as an ACC level player, but to be honest there was not this sure thing that he was going to wind up being, you know, the go-to guy for Syracuse. He's turned into that and now the Orange uh, have made plenty of experts look a little foolish after the fact, after many people were saying, wait, this team's not only in the field, but it's not even in the first four? What's it doing there? It's got it done, and it knocks off uh, a quality West Virginia team. Look, Buddy Beheim, 6'6", six, six, and he can stroke it. I mean, you got a guy like Duncan Robinson in the yeah. league <laughs> who was at Michigan, started out at Williams, and he's definitely found a home. I, I think, you know, there's got to be a spot somewhere for a guy like that who can handle it a little, knock down the open shot, got some length, a long arm, 6'6". Six, six. I think he's going to find his way into the league. Now, you mentioned uh, Matt Norlander, Culver, sort of not having a good game. This is an all Big 12 first team guy. He sat a lot in the second half. It almost seemed like, I mean, he was like, you know, sort of lost a little confidence in him. Maybe dug out. Were you surprised he played so few minutes in the second half considering that good players eventually sort of snap out of it, don't they? 
Yeah, a little surprised. I mean, Huggins knows what he's doing. He, he picked up win number 900, and he's going to have to sit on win number 900 until we get to November here. So I don't want to second guess Huggins too much with that decision, given what Syracuse was doing. And to be honest, West Virginia got itself back in the game. Like, this game could have been just, a, oh, wow, like Syracuse not only wins, it wins by 13. Like, West Virginia, they, they do not quit. I know they lost here, but I'm going to repeat something that I said a couple times back in January after some West Virginia wins. That team and that league has the biggest reputation for it. it does not matter how deep they are down in the second half. They can be down by 5 or 25. They never stop playing they never stop coming after you and they almost pulled the rug out from Syracuse uh, you accurately described that play EK that football like contact I mean that was that was a 12 yard completion over the middle there and they had to call the foul they wanted to get the jump ball they couldn't get it done Syracuse retains possession and then real quick just on the end of game sequence West Virginia settled for the two uh, a quick layup it to me in that spot you need the three because you cannot rely on a missed foul shot or then and then make another basket and then try and get a steal. It's not that it can't happen. It's just exceedingly unlikely. And you put yourself in a much better spot if you make the three. It wound up being moot. Deuce McBride got the, uh, got the outlet pass and then wound up traveling and the game was done there. So a tough loss for West Virginia. For Syracuse, no matter what team it gets, whether it's Houston or Rutgers, it doesn't, you know, no matter which one it is, that is going to set up decently well for them. I'm not going to guarantee they're going into the Elite Eight, but, man, I mean, it's it's hard to ask for a much kinder potential regional semifinal opponent next weekend than either of those two teams. And I say that while fully acknowledging that Houston's absolutely good enough to come out oh, of this oh, region. Oh, by the and way, the final. Syracuse and Rutgers did play in the regular season. Rutgers won the game, but you feel like this is a completely different group of orange taking the floor now. Chip, your thoughts on what we were just talking about in terms of Bob Huggins, what he did with his all Big 12 player, you know, Culver didn't play a lot in the second half, and ultimately West Virginia came back, climbed the mountain, but, you know, from that five minutes to two minutes stretch, it was all orange. Yeah, I think that the interesting thing that I'm going to be tracking is probably on the Syracuse side of things, uh, where Kadari Richmond has been the topic of much conversation among Syracuse fans and Syracuse media. If you remember when Jim Beheim decided that he was going to height shame a reporter for being five foot two and never having played basketball in his life, like one of the topics that he was being criticized for was why somebody who legitimately might be an NBA prospect, why he was not playing more. And, you know, he's a very good ball handler, very good point guard. And there in the final moments, he wasn't on the floor for a few of those times when Syracuse was starting to get a little panicky. Then we put Kadari Richmond on the floor. And what does he do? He realizes that West Virginia has not sealed the sideline. He makes it up the floor, makes the pass to finally get it past midcourt. I mean, it felt like Syracuse had the ball on the, its end of the court for so long. It was like the LSU offense in the 2011 BCS championship game against Alabama. It just wasn't getting past the 50 and so finally you start to see that freshman guard who's a little bit better of a ball handler get in there and you know it's just a, a little piece of the Syracuse narrative that's been going on throughout the year you know as ornery and cantankerous as he is always Jim Beheim doesn't like to be told what to do and so it'll be interesting to see you know as Syracuse plays this forward you know Rutgers you mentioned that's been a meeting that's happened Houston would be an absolutely uh, difficult challenge challenge for any team in the NCAA tournament the way that the Cougars are playing right now but this is a another example for those Syracuse fans and the Syracuse media that have been frustrated with some of the lineup decisions by Jim Beheim. Uh, just another example for the uh, the folder of, uh, of criticism, which I'm sure the conversation is ongoing even tonight, even as they celebrate victory because of how tight things got. I mean, EK, you know what we saw? It was a... Yeah, a we tight. did. I love, I, love, yeah. Yes, I love the chip batters and smoochy smoochy. Uh, by the way, I, you know, in when Syracuse got bailed out on the hell ball by the possession arrow with like a minute to go, Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.